On average, a modern car has around 70 sensors, and in super high-tech models, it can go over 200 sensors. These tiny electronic parts are why your car can break automatically, alert you to nearby vehicles, or even optimize fuel use without you lifting a finger. Today, we're breaking down every engine sensor, what it does, how it works, and what happens when it fails. To make things more logical and easier to understand, I have grouped sensors into five categories. Position, airflow, pressure, temperature, and air fuel ratios, emissions, and others. And we're starting right away with position sensors, crankshaft, position sensor, the crankshaft position sensor is like the heartbeat monitor of your engine. It tells the ECU exactly where the crankshaft is, which means the computer also knows where each piston is inside the cylinders. That's how it times fuel injection and spark ignition perfectly. It works using a trigger wheel with teeth, some missing on purpose. As those teeth spin past the sensor, it changes the electrical signal, letting the ECU read position and even calculate RPM. You'll usually find this sensor near the crank pulley, timing gear or flywheel. If it fails, the car may not start at all or it'll run rough. Camshaft position sensor. If the crank sensor is the heartbeat, the camshaft sensor is like the brain's second opinion. It does the same job but for the camshaft, giving the ECU a clearer picture of what each cylinder is doing. With this extra info, the computer can do smarter things like sequential fuel injection or cylinder-specific knock control. It uses a smaller trigger wheel and sits near the camshaft, usually on the cam cover. If it fails, the symptoms are similar to a crank sensor, misfires, rough running, or the car refusing to start. Throttle Position Sensor, TPS. The throttle position sensor is the translator between your right foot and the engine. When you press the gas pedal, the throttle plate opens. The TPS measures the opening and tells the ECU how much load is on the engine. Old versions used a variable resistor, while modern ones use Hall Effect or magnetic sensors for better accuracy. It's always mounted on the throttle body. When it goes bad, you'll notice unpredictable acceleration, weird idle speeds, or the car struggling to start. If you made it this far, then consider liking this video giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing to my channel. This helps me bring you more honest car advice. Coming back to airflow sensors. Mass Airflow MAF Sensor. The MAF sensor tells the ECU how much air is entering the engine. Why does that matter? Because fuel and air have to stay balanced. Too much or too little fuel, and the engine runs poorly. Most MAFS are either hot wire or hot film. They use tiny wires made from metals like platinum that heat up. As air flows past, it cools them down, changing resistance. The sensor measures this change and tells the ECU exactly how much air is coming in. You'll usually spot a MAF right after the air filter housing, before the throttle body. If it fails completely, your engine won't start. If it's dirty or weak, you'll get rough idle, poor mileage, hesitation when accelerating, or the engine stumbling. Airflow Meter, AFM slash Vane Meter. Older cars often used a vane style airflow meter instead of an MAF. It works like this. Incoming air pushes against a flap and the flap is connected to a variable resistor. Different flap positions send different resistance signals to the ECU telling it how much air is flowing in. Like the MAF, you'll find it near the air filter. And just like the MAF, when it fails, the symptoms are the same. Rough running, poor idle, hesitation, and bad fuel economy. Next is pressure sensors. Manifold Absolute Pressure MAP Sensor The MAP sensor measures the pressure inside the intake manifold. Instead of directly weighing the air like a MAF, it calculates the amount of air based on pressure. More air equals more pressure. Inside, it uses a tiny silicon chip with a piezoelectric element. As pressure flexes the chip's membrane, the electrical charge changes. The ECU reads this signal and figures out how much air is entering the engine. You'll always find it on the intake manifold. If it fails, you'll see the same issues as a bad MAF, rough idle, stumbling, poor acceleration, and lousy gas mileage. Oil Pressure Sensor the oil pressure sensor monitors oil pressure inside the engine. Simple, but absolutely critical. Without proper oil pressure, the engine can destroy itself in seconds. It works just like the MAP sensor, but is calibrated for oil instead of air. Some engines use a basic oil pressure switch. If pressure drops, it opens a circuit and triggers that dreaded red oil light. You'll find it tapped into the engine block, often near the oil filter. If it fails, the ECU may put the car in limp mode or refuse to start. And if real oil pressure is gone, shut it down fast, your engine's life depends on it. 
Fuel Pressure Sensor the fuel pressure sensor measures the pressure in the fuel rail. This tells the ECU how long to open the injectors so the right amount of fuel gets sprayed in. It's usually mounted directly on the fuel rail. When it goes bad, the first sign is hard starting, especially when the engine's cold. Other symptoms? Weak acceleration and poor fuel economy. Temperature sensors. Intake air temperature, IAT sensor. The intake air temperature sensor, or IAT, measures the temperature of the air coming into your engine. Why does this matter? Because air density changes with temperature. Hot air is lighter and less dense, which means fewer oxygen molecules per gulp of air. Cold air is heavier, with more oxygen packed in, and the ECU needs to know this so it can balance fuel correctly. The IAT works hand in hand with sensors like the MAF or MAP to give the ECU a complete picture. Together, they help Help reduce emissions, improve fuel efficiency, and make sure your car pulls the right amount of power. Most IAT sensors are thermistors. That's just a fancy word for a component that changes electrical resistance based on temperature. The ECU reads those resistance changes and translates them into accurate air temperatures. You'll usually find the IAT built into the MAF sensor or somewhere in the intake duct near the throttle body. If it gets a little dirty, you may barely notice a problem, but if it fails badly, the engine can stumble, stall, surge or even run rough at idle. Coolant Temperature Sensor Next up, the coolant temperature sensor, the one that tells the ECU how hot your engine is running. This is huge because a cold engine and a hot engine need very different fuel mixtures. When the engine is cold, it needs more fuel to start and run smoothly. When it's hot, it needs less. The coolant sensor also tells the ECU when to kick on the radiator fans, when to put the car into limp mode, or even when to shut it down completely if overheating. Like the IAT, this sensor is also a thermistor, and it's always in direct contact with coolant. You'll often see it near the thermostat or in the coolant pipes. Some cars even use more than one for accuracy. When it fails, the ECU gets confused. If it thinks the engine is cold when it's actually hot, it will dump in extra fuel, causing poor mileage, black smoke, or a rich condition. If it thinks the engine is hot when it's really cold, it won't give enough fuel, leading to rough starts, misfires, and knocking until the engine warms up. Fuel Temperature Sensor Fuel temperature also matters because fuel density changes with heat. Hot fuel is thinner and burns more easily, while cooler fuel is denser and packs more energy. To keep things precise, the ECU uses a fuel temperature sensor to make small corrections when calculating injection. This sensor is usually tucked inside the fuel tank, often built into the fuel pump assembly. Sometimes it's placed along the fuel lines. Its main job is accuracy, making sure emissions are clean and mileage stays consistent. If it fails, most drivers won't notice right away. The car will still run, but mileage may dip slightly or the car could fail an emissions test. In more severe cases, performance can feel weaker than normal. Oil Temperature Sensor not all cars have one, but when they do, the oil temperature sensor is a serious extra layer of protection. Oil needs to stay at the right temperature to keep its viscosity. If it overheats, the oil thins out and stops protecting your engine properly, which can lead to catastrophic failure. The oil temp sensor warns both the ECU and sometimes the driver. If oil gets too hot, the ECU can put the car into limp mode or even prevent the engine from starting until temperatures normalize. Some cars display oil temp on the dashboard so you can react before things get ugly. To do its job, the sensor must be in direct contact with oil. It's usually mounted on the engine block, sometimes on the cylinder head, or integrated into an oil level sensor in newer models. If it fails, the ECU may falsely think oil temps are sky high and trigger limp mode, or worse, not warn you at all when temps really are too high. If your car has a gauge, a faulty reading is usually the giveaway. Now we have air fuel ratio, emissions, and other sensors oxygen O2 sensor. The oxygen sensor or O2 sensor measures how much oxygen is in your exhaust gases. Why? Because oxygen levels in the exhaust directly reveal how much fuel was burned in the cylinder. This lets the ECU know the engine's air fuel ratio. The air fuel ratio is critical, too rich, too much fuel, and you waste gas. Foul spark plugs and damage the catalytic converter. Too lean, too much air, and you risk misfires or even engine knock. The O2 sensor constantly checks this balance. 
balance. There are two main types. Narrow band only tells if you're rich or lean, and wide band gives precise measurements across a wide range. Modern cars rely heavily on wide band sensors for accuracy. Most cars with catalytic converters have at least two O2 sensors, one before the converter, upstream to measure mixture, and one after, downstream, to make sure the converter is cleaning things up properly. When they fail, symptoms range from subtle to obvious. Sometimes you'll just fail an emissions test. Other times the car will run rough, idle poorly, or even refuse to start on newer models. A bad O2 sensor left unchecked can also shorten the life of your catalytic converter. Exhaust Gas Temperature EGT Sensor the EGT sensor is a probe that measures how hot your exhaust gases are. The hotter the exhaust, the leaner the mixture. Cooler exhaust usually means richer combustion. EGT sensors aren't very common on gas engines, but they are critical on turbo diesels. They help protect the turbocharger and catalytic converter from overheating, and they ensure the diesel particulate filter, DPF, gets hot enough for regeneration. That's when the soot burns off. You'll usually find an EGT probe close to the exhaust valves in the exhaust manifold or after the DPF to confirm it's doing its job. If an EGT sensor fails on a diesel, you'll notice frequent regeneration cycles, longer region times, worse mileage, and sometimes sluggish performance. For performance tuning, EGT probes are still valuable tools, even if they're considered old school. Knock sensor NOx sensors measure nitrogen oxides in the exhaust. These harmful gases need to be controlled for emission standards, especially in diesels. They work with the SCR system, Selective Catalytic Reduction, which injects diesel exhaust fluid, DEF or urea, into the exhaust. This converts NOx into harmless nitrogen, water, and tiny amounts of CO2. Most diesels have two NOx sensors, one before the SCR to measure how much NOx is coming in, and one after to verify how much is cleaned up. Up. If a NOx sensor fails, the ECU often forces the engine into limp mode. Drivers may also notice poor fuel economy or a rough idle. Without these sensors working, emission systems can't function properly. NOx sensor Knock is abnormal combustion inside the cylinder, basically fuel exploding when it shouldn't. Left unchecked, it can destroy pistons, rods, and bearings. The knock sensor acts like a finely tuned microphone bolted to the engine block. It listens for knock vibrations at specific frequencies based on the engine's design. If it detects a knock, it alerts the ECU. The ECU then retards ignition timing or adds more fuel to stop the knock before damage happens. Engines with six or more cylinders often have multiple multiple knock sensors. If a knock sensor fails, older cars might keep running without issues except for a check engine light. But on newer cars, the ECU will often go into limp mode to protect the engine until the sensor is replaced. And that's every major engine sensor explained. But this is just the start. Modern cars now use even more advanced sensors like radar, lidar, ultrasonic, and cameras for features like lane keeping, adaptive cruise control, and automatic emergency braking. Would you like me to make a full video break breaking down these modern sensors and how they work. Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then be sure to watch this video next where I'm sharing secret tricks to fix your throttle position sensor in just eight minutes.